Hi, I'm Steve and welcome back to my channel. This is the first of four videos where I recondition this gearbox. Now, ever since I've had the car, the gearbox that was in the car um, had a fault and I couldn't change into second, either going up or going down. Now, I still don't really know what caused it, but I do know the rubber bush in the lever was gone and there was a grommet in there and that might have been the problem although I tried adjusting it in all ways when it was in the car and I could never improve it. So over the years, um, whenever I've got an opportunity to get another gearbox, I just bought them. So I ended up with five gearboxes. So I dismantled all the five gearboxes and chose the best bits to go in this one. So in the first video, I'm talking about the gear ratios between the drive and the driven here and then I take this off and I'm, I'm talking about how it works and what each gear does. In the second video I will be dismantling the original box. In the third video I'll be making gaskets and in the fourth video I will be assembling this box and working out the level of the oil because I can't use this. And I'll get, I'll get onto that why I can't use this dipstick. So the first thing I need to do is remove this bell housing and then get all the dirt off of the outside of the casings before I open the gearbox because when it comes to gearboxes cleanliness is everything. Those bolts are 7 16th UNC. Right, that's as clean as I can get it all around there now because I don't want any dirt falling inside the gearbox when I take this out because I don't know what I'm actually going to do to this gearbox yet. I may end up taking all the components out and cleaning them but in case I don't, I've got this as clean as possible. And I thought before I uh, do take this off, I will find out what each position of these levers do. So each, each lever has three positions and I put a mark on the output shaft and I've got a mark on the input shaft. But each lever has three positions and the middle position is neutral and it will only be in neutral when both levers are in the middle position. Now I'm turning, turning that and this is not turning. Okay. Now, the lever towards the back of the car, when you push it towards the back of the car, that is first gear. And the reason I know is because I'm going to turn this one revolution, and this one has only turned up just over a quarter of a revolution. So that proves that it's first gear. Now, when you turn this lever towards the front of the car, that's reverse. So I'm turning it clockwise and that's going anti-clockwise. This, this one, when you turn it towards the front of the car, that's second gear. So I'll turn this one revolution again and it's gone round a bit further. So when you turn this lever towards the back of the car, that is third gear. And top gear on most cars is one to one. So when I turn this one revolution, that turns one revolution. There's two dowels there, holding, locating that. 
So I need to get get it under there somehow. Oh yeah, that's broken the seal good. Make sure this is in neutral. Yeah, that's in neutral. Oh, that's quite easy. So. Okay. When I started my apprenticeship many, many years ago, the first day at college, we had this old lecturer. The first thing he said, he pulled a six inch wall out of his top pocket and he had a white coat and it was only in the classroom we thought it was a bit extreme but anyway he pulled a six inch wall out of his top pocket and he says right lads this is going to be your most useful tool you, you ever own it will be used for a multitude of tasks including undoing screws and stirring your tea and stripping paint off and everything it's the first thing you reach for this one's been sharpened on the end so I can use it for other things see better days these gearboxes are different to the later ones Ford made right later ones had the had the selector forks on the top and there was two rails going along and these are different so these forks go in here and this is a, a funny shaped one that I've never seen that is for first and reverse and there's a there's a, a bush in here now that V that V there is deeper than the other two. So the deeper V is the neutral. So then that allows first or set or reverse or whatever to be selected. But the the end of this bush is is pushed that way by by this cam. So that means that this one this one can't be moved. So it has to go into neutral before this can be moved. Now this one can't be moved because the bush is being pushed that way. And you can see that, see that being pushed across. And that's how they've done it. It's a nice way of locating it, but you know you're going to get more wear on, on this because later gearboxes didn't have this type. I've just been reading a book and they mention that there's a difference on these two levers and as you can see this one has more of an angle than this one so the one towards the back of the gearbox for first and reverse is part number 7291 and the one towards the front of the car is 7286 now this I don't know if this had anything to do with the gearbox problem this one's okay first and reverse that's all original bush but this one's gone so i don't know about the rest of the bush linkages because there's, there's other linkages as well at the bottom of the steering column but i don't know if that would cause it to not change gear i'm not i'm not sure i just looked on the car at the, the other two bushes and they look fine they're not moving this is the only bad one and this is second and third and that I was getting problems between second and third well I'm putting this cloth around it because there's a ball bearing in there <clears throat> I don't want that flying across the workshop well, that's come out quite easy Okay, so it's still there. So there's the ball bearing for that side. There's the spring that's inside it. That's the top of the gearbox. And these 
are at the top so you, they can't be put back because they're on the bottom there so so these are at the top but this one's a bit tight for some reason Got it. There we go, that's out. Right, now I've looked at this in more detail, I managed to get this out. And then that was in there. Now I put that, I must have put that in there to fix the the uh, original bush that had perished away. Well, that is loose, but that didn't improve anything with the gears. I still had the problem went right up until I took it off the road so I think that I need to look at the synchro ring and I need to get a new bush to go in here Before I start dismantling this gearbox I thought I'd take a while and see how it works and get it all in my mind. Now that's the front of the car towards a clutch and the other way is towards the axle and this is the output shaft and it's, it's one piece of metal right from the prop shaft right the way in and it meets the input shaft here with some needle bearings it's about, I don't know what size, it's probably about three quarters of an inch diameter goes into here with needle bearings around it so the output shaft is supported here and it's supported here by a bigger bearing now the input shaft here is permanently connected to the lay shaft that runs right the way across here now, because these cars haven't got synchro mesh on first gear, there's no synchro assembly on this first and reverse gear. So it simply slides in like that. When, when you press the clutch down, this stops. And, this, and, and the shaft has stopped because you're not going anywhere. The wheels have stopped. So they put a nice radius on here to enable that to go in without too much crunching if you get it all wrong now when it go into reverse this gear meshes onto this idler gear down here and that is permanently connected to the lay shaft through this gear so that I won't go across now that, that goes across like that and now it's in reverse This is the synch synchro mesh assembly between second and third. So when it when it goes when it goes this way, it changes into second. So when you change into second, this moves across, and at the same time, this synchro assembly moves across, and it synchronizes. The speed of the wheels, because this is permanently connected to the to the the prop shaft, and this is connected to the engine. But they need to run at the, at the same speed, so this can slide across. So they, those teeth there are the synchro ring, or the proper name is the blocker ring, and this is a new blocker ring and I've got it the wrong way it's that way round and there's a cone in here so as that is pushed across this rubs on the cone of this gear and it allows it to slide over and then the power is transferred across to here let's see if I can move that across oh that's gone across right so now that's in second gear 
So the power from the engine is coming out of this input shaft. It's going along the lay shaft. It's going up into this gear, which is really an idler gear, actually. And then the power is going across to the synchro assembly, the synchro hub. This is the synchro hub. And in the middle of that synchro hub, there's a spline that fits onto the output shaft and the power is, is transferred along the output shaft to, to the prop shaft. When you change into third gear, the synchro sleeve moves all the way across and as it does that, it makes the input shaft, because you remember you got the clutch pressed down at this point, so this is kind of freewheeling in a way, and so it makes the input shaft turn at the same same speed as the output shaft and then it engages. So then the power is going directly onto the synchro hub and then directly onto the output shaft by the spline in the middle of the synchro hub. So then you've got a one-to-one. -one. So if, if I don't know if you can see the mark here, it's lined up with the mark on the sleeve. So that's one-to-one. -one. So now I've got to remove this synchro assembly and have a look to see if there's any problems within that. There's springs in there holding synchro plates and things in there. So I don't want to take this lay shaft out because there's needle bearings either end and that will be difficult to get that back without damaging it. So I'm hoping that I can remove the input shaft because that's quite small, that will go that way. And because there's a lot of movement here, I can move the output shaft quite a way backwards and hopefully that will allow me to take that out.